and welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Polk County. I'm your host, Yasmeen Ali. First up this month, we're taking a look at the Florida Nature Exhibit at the Lake Wales Art Center. This year's exhibit showcases stunning photography by former Sumter County Sheriff Jamie Adams, as well as masterful paintings by local artists Tom Freeman and Marsha Pennington. Check this out for a glimpse of Florida nature and to learn about some stories behind these fine works of art. When I started with the Lake Wells Arts Council um, last March, I heard about our really successful Florida nature exhibit with Mike Pothast and um, Sheriff Grady Judd. And I knew since it was so successful the last season that we'd probably want to bring it back for this season. Um, about two months after that, um, after I started, so in, in May, Tom Freeman and, and Marsha Pennington approached me and said, hey, we're working on this book and we think we would really like to do an exhibit here. What are your thoughts? And I said, well, absolutely. I would, I would, I would definitely like to do that um, because we were already thinking about, about having our Florida Nature exhibit. So yeah, after that, it was just kind of, uh, over the months, we just started to plan, and then we talked to um, Sheriff Jamie Adams, um, who's a, a wildlife photographer, um, to see if he'd be our, um, a part of our trio of artists, and, and he was very happy to do it, so we're really uh, pleased with the way that the gallery turned out. Uh, Andrew Allen, the director of the Art Center here, uh, told us about the nature exhibit and invited uh, three of us to exhibit our work here. Uh, he knew about Tom Freeman and his work with uh, nature paintings. And uh, Tom is my biggest advocate. And he said, well, you know, Marsha Pennington paints nature also. And could she be in the show also? So uh, I came in on his coattails. 1944 uh, was a long time ago. And those were the days that I began painting. And my first paintings were done with a doctor, uh, Bowden. And um, they were done with, uh, with a, a different type of paint. And then acrylic came out in the early 19, I think about 1940 or 50, acrylic paint came on, on the market. And that was an absolute, beautiful way of, of painting. I did oils and I did uh, um, watercolor. And, and, but the, the, when the acrylics came out, I really went for that big time. And these are acrylic, this is an acrylic paint. And, and by the way, it will just last forever. It will just last forever. Most of the paintings that you see here are paintings that I've gone out and located and painted, like the three on the wall over there. Those are three paintings that were left by the people who owned the property to their son. Most of the people that um, buy my paintings like to have a place that they've seen or been to or someplace that they really like, um, like the painting that's at the far end of the building there. That's with turkeys, and it's a place where it's called the Cypress Cathedral. Those cypress trees are, are very, very popular in that particular area. And uh, they um, were par partially blown down in the last hurricane we had in 06. They're very popular. That's the Wild turkeys are very popular in that area and those gathered around while I was doing the painting. And it was fun. It's fun to see the, the turkeys. I have uh, been painting for about six years uh, with uh, Tom. And of course, since he paints nature, I've been painting nature. So uh, I've been going through some phases. Uh, I did a series of bird pictures all uh, mostly the big birds uh, that live near where I live. And uh, so I've enjoyed that. And then I moved on to uh, flowers for a little while. And uh, then uh, the big scenes. 
uh, with the water scenes. You know, we go out in the boat sometimes and we uh, paint or begin a painting from the boat, but we also take photographs because you can't finish a painting uh, so quickly. And uh, it helps us with the lighting and the themes and the various uh, colors of the trees and things. Uh, so those are my themes and I've really enjoyed uh, working with them. I'm not finished yet. We're still exploring uh, all of nature, flowers, uh, landscapes, and animals. Well, it seems like every kind of landscape can be found right here in Polk County. We have ranches, we have forests, we have many lakes and creeks and waterways. We have old dilapidated buildings, which are very fun. And uh, of course, the animal life is extensive and beautiful and easily accessible. It's uh, just right out there. Um, most of these places will strike me as having something special. There'll be, um, there'll be um, something with the turkeys, something with the cattle or the cowboy, or the old buildings that are still standing. And I will see something special and I'll, I'll gotta, I gotta go for it. I gotta put it on canvas some way. And um, it, it's not really any, anything special, but it's something that that goes with what I'm thinking about, and I'll put it down. I've painted some 1900 can, uh, paintings in, in my lifetime from Florida State University and all down the line. We've had a lot of, of great feedback. Um, this work really resonates with, with, with all of our residents. Um, being a third generation resident myself, um, a lot of these places I've actually been to. So it's, it's uh, uh, really great to see it up on our walls. Um, I think uh, celebrating these artists um, means a lot. Uh, you know, Tom, Tom Freeman's been around a long time. Um, he's been around so long, he actually was my, my parents' art teacher um, back in the 60s. So it, it, was, it was really cool for me to be able to bring Tom here. Um, my parents love his work, and I've always, I've always been around his work through, through all of his paintings at our house. I think that they're special. I think that they um, exemplify um, the, the true beauty of, of Florida, and I think it, it really needs to be represented, so. Once you get set up with an easel and your paints and your brushes, uh, you can just kind of move from one to another. Uh, you can go out photographing or just go out in your front yard and uh, start a painting or do a whole painting. And it seems to be the medium that gives me the most satisfaction at this time. Plus, there's Tom Freeman. And he does nothing but paint. <laughs> and. Uh, if you want to spend some time with Tom, it would be a good idea to paint because we have a lot of fun painting together. Oh my goodness, I met Marsha probably uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Originally, just she had, had seen some of my work and she's a painter, she, beautiful, beautiful work. Look at that, what you call it? Spoon, spoon a spoon bill, yeah. And it's colorful, and uh, she, it's her work. It just she, there's a hawk back there that's really beautiful, and she's she's painted a turkey. Absolutely beautiful. I've painted it, the same one before, and I know how difficult it was to paint it. And she's painted it beautifully. We just have a great time painting, she and I, and uh, we go. And, sit and, and paint and, and uh, or we take some pictures and come home and paint whatever whatever is convenient. I think that um, anybody who's a fan of Florida, anybody who's a fan of, of birds, 
and, and, and really nature in, in general can really appreciate this art. And I think celebrating the life of, of, of Tom Freeman um, is especially important because of the profound impact he's had on so many residents in, in Polk County over the past eight decades. Tom's not teaching anymore, but uh, here at the Art Center, they're working hard to uh, give classes and they have a variety of teachers, which is always a good thing to see what different people uh, might recommend that you do in different styles. And uh, downtown, there are a couple of areas. There's a, a new gallery called the Melange. Uh, then they're trying to do a few uh, classes of their ilk. And uh, you just have to look around. And it's here. Search it out. The Florida Nature Exhibit will be on display at the Lake Wells Art Center until April 1st. For more information, visit www.lakewellsartscouncil.org. This month, we're shining a spotlight on Denise Settles, a mixed media artist who's inspired by the many beautiful landscapes of Lakeland. She grew up with a passion for drawing that has stuck with her throughout her life and enjoys using the art of subtlety to portray scenes that illustrate nature. Here's a look at the artwork of Denise Settles. Um, I'm Denise Settles and I like to do, um, the, well, I do watercolor and ink right now. And so it, it's transitioned over time. Uh, I started uh, in oil paints, um, then I moved to acrylics, um, and so, and now I'm at watercolor and ink. And so, so it's nice having those transitions. I, uh, so I'm a fan of all mediums. I started um, early on because, well, my brothers used to draw, so so I started to, to draw too. I used to copy like the cartoon characters. I remember like copying Garfield of the comics and, and you know, just just um, just copying it. And so I think, um, gosh, I was probably, you know, seven, eight years old. I used to, how I made friends was, um, my friends would like to draw too. And we used to have little drawing contests and I remember drawing like horses and, uh, you, you know, unicorns and stuff like that because I'm very shy um, and so that was a way like to to communicate with others um, that would be through drawing and it just stuck with me all my life. I've always liked copying what's in front of me and uh, translating that onto paper. I like going to the lakes. I like the the, the, the ducks, the, the birds, the swans, you know, um, you know, so that's where, you know, it all started. When I'm doing it, like I could spend, you know, three, four hours and it, but it doesn't, it, it, it's just a nice feeling. It doesn't feel like you're, you know, tedious work. I use a watercolor ground on canvas and it gives like a rougher texture, like kind of like um, concrete would kind of, you know, if you run your hands over concrete, that's what the texture of, of the canvas will feel like after you put the watercolor ground on it. Like I've heard, um, somebody that it took them back to like those Winnie the Pooh days, the classic days. Like I've, I've heard, um, I've had comments before that, that you know, it takes them back to that. And so I, I like that, um, that it can bring that like inner childhood, um, sometimes looking at some of the pieces. I, I, I like that my work can speak to, to a lot of people um, all at once, um, more so than, than you know, my words can when I'm rambling. Um, and over time, it's, it's funny because over time, as, as you age and you grow, you see these different, different traits. You're, you become more, more homey, more connected with your, your family, and you find out the things that are more important to you. It's good to focus on the positives, uh, on the positive things that people are doing. Um, nowadays, that, that we're, we're at the time we are, there, there's um, so much 
negativity that, that's going on, like, you know, in, in the media and, and, you know, just um, everyday life. And so it's nice to see, um, it's, art kind of brings a little bit of a, a piece of, um, you know, that peacefulness and the joy and it makes you smile and it makes you stop and look at things because you get so busy um, with, with everything going on because everybody has, you know, um, different things that are going on in your life and you're passing by so many people. When you pass by people, you don't realize everything that's going on in, in you know, their, their, their lives. And, but art kind of brings people together. It, it makes them stop and it, what they're doing. It makes them uh, look at what they're doing. It might bring like a, a something that it grabs their attention. It, it, it'll bring something that, you know, um, you know, could calm them, you know, um, for it. So it's just, it's, it should be in everybody's lives. You know, that's, that's what makes us, us, you know, we're, we're all unique individuals. Um, we're all creative individuals. Art, it just brings a, a good piece of that to the community. So, so it's great for communities to support that because it kind of livens up, it livens up the area. It brings, you know, it makes people stop and, and, and think or just, just, just stop and, and look. I believe um, that everybody can can do something, and, and if everybody, I, I, I believe that it just it's patience. It takes patience and the time to to do it, and it's it's like one of those things like you know you're learning to walk, you're learning to talk, you're 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 learning like a new sport, or or you know you're you're studying in school. It's it's one of those things you you get it little by little. And so nobody starts out like, you know, as, you know, Da Vinci or, or you know, uh, as, you know, a master artist. It, you, you just have to have a passion for it. And you just do a little bit every day, a little bit every day. And if it's one of those things that you enjoy um, to do and if it, it, it just draws you in and you find yourself doing it um, often, um, just make the time for it because it, 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 it's, um, it's, it, it, it really brings a good piece to, to, to life, it, it does. For our final segment, we're heading back to Lake Wales for the 48th annual Lake Wales Arts Festival. Hosted by the Lake Wales Arts Council, this 47-year-old tradition featured over 100 participants this year who competed for more than $22,000 in prizes. The history and diversity of this festival attracts thousands of visitors each year who are looking for that original one-of-a-kind piece of art to add to their collection. Check this out to take a look at some of the works of art for yourself and meet some of the creators behind this year's event. self-trained oil painter, paint landscapes almost exclusively, um, inspired by the 19th century Hudson River School and Luminism uh, movements, as well as um, painters from the Dusseldorf School in the 1800s, so all of my influence comes from the 18th. 
1800s. Um, here at the festival, it's a festival I've done for a long time. I love the little community of Lake Wales and I have lots of friends here, so that's the main reason that I'm here. I have always been impressed by um, the imagination and the fortitude and just the handling of light by those 19th century uh, painters. Um, their light effects were amazing. They, it, it's almost like they had their hand on God and, and they were, you know, they, they saw the spirit in, in everything around them and they did their best to get that on, on their canvases and it's what I do too. To me, it's the beauty is in the light and, and all these things around. And where I live in Micanopy, I have uh, preserves on four sides. So often, if I just want to go out and see the sky or do a little painting or just be out and do something, it's really easy for me to do. You know, if all is going well, all the, all the painting spirits are aligned and um, you can do one in a day. Um, bigger ones, bigger ones can go on for weeks <laughs> or months. So, you know, and, and actually a, a uh, painting often is never completely done. If you have it for a while, there's things that you see and you can go back and you can adjust something, um, you know, until someone buys it and then it's sort of out of your hands, literally. I like people to notice the, the light in it. Um, lots of people describe that they feel a sense of spirit, a sense of peace. Um, it, the paintings are done in such a way that you almost feel as if you're there. There's a lot of detail in them, but that's not the most important thing. The over, to me, the important thing is, is that feeling of peace, tranquility, serenity, and that, you know, the world, the world is a beautiful place. Well... I do photography, wildlife, nature. Uh, I love it, it's my passion. Um, I'm retired and so I have a lot of time to do it. Um, probably about 15 years that I've been kind of serious about photography. Applied for it last year and we got in, we got in again this year and we really enjoy it. It's a good, it's a good show. I'm from originally from Ludington, Michigan and we live in Sebring now and we still travel back to Michigan all summer and, and various other places when we can. Well, we used to do a lot of shows in Michigan, so we have a lot of Michigan photos, but they're a lot different than, <clears throat> they wouldn't sell probably too well here. Um, so we do a lot of Florida photography here, uh, mostly wildlife, um, birds and such. And then we travel, I love the West, I love the mountains. And that's where, you know, we, that's where I enjoy doing photography the most. You know, we went to Alaska last summer and that was enjoyable. Well, I probably had too long of a lens on some of these bear shots from Alaska because uh, I, the, the guide that we had, the pilot, he was a pilot and guide that we had take us into Katmai National Park where the bears, the Alaskan brown bears are. He asked, asked me, when he saw my camera equipment, he says, how close do you really need to get? I said, well, I'd like to get within 20 feet. And lo and behold, that's how close we got in a lot of cases. Well, the bears initially were further away, but they worked their way right towards us. Just maybe curiosity, I don't know, but we got some pretty close shots. <laughs> I'd say some of the photos are, are just, took only about 20 seconds to do. You know, and some of them took weeks to sit someplace and watch an eagle come in for the perfect shot and the perfect light. So it can take weeks, months, um, or just in an instant. So <laughs> mainly I, I, I actually like looking at it more than I do taking pictures of it. So appreciate if it's an animal, appreciate that animal, you know, what it's got to do to survive and, and a, a, a landscape scene, you know, Maybe you can't ever get there and see it yourself, but you know, there it is in front of you. Might inspire you to go see it. I mean, 
It's only made once. You can't re reproduce it, not even in a picture. So. So my name is Tai Tai Wali'i. Um, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, I work with ballpoint pen. Um, all of my drawings are done with uh, Bic pen. Then I'll use some watercolor and colored pencils to add some color to it. And I'm here doing the Lake Wells show. Um, it was a show that I found online. Um, I was actually doing a show in uh, Miami. I was doing Coconut Grove show in Miami last weekend, and I'm from Salt Lake City, so driving all the way to Florida just to do one show uh, doesn't make that much sense. But I found the show and I read into it and it seemed like a fun show for me to do. My work um, sort of sticks out like a sore thumb at a show like this, but I, I usually like to do that. I like to go to shows where you wouldn't expect to see me. Um, and people have an appreciation for it. They see it and they go, oh wow, this is so different. It's something I didn't realize existed. So initially it started um, in elementary school. I, um, the sound of pencil on paper was like fingernails on a chalkboard. So it was so overwhelming to me that I ha just had to use a pen. So it was, um, uh, using a pen was just more pragmatic. So that was where it started. I just used a pen and for all my schoolwork and everything instead of using a pencil. And I just became used to it. And then I, I've always been drawing, so all my style and all my work has always been based around the ballpoint pen. And I've just liked it. I know how the pen works. I know what it's gonna do, and it's uh, kind of my style, so I've just stuck with it. Um, so I pull a lot of uh, my energy and uh, concepts from my youth when I grew up in the early 80s and uh, I watched a lot of movies and listened to a lot of music and that energy that I had at that time that I was f full of teenage angst and I find that a good tool to um, uh, for expression so I'm able I'm 41 years old now so I'm, I'm distant from that energy but I'm able to tap into that by using music so the music that I listened to when I was growing up so I turn on music and I'll, I'll tap into that energy. I don't have that much angst anymore, <laughs> but that that angst energy is was a the foundation of my style. So I, I'll always be able to tap into that. For me, I'm I think I just like people to think, um, and sometimes people have a negative feeling towards my work, but I I don't mind that either. I as long as I'm, I'm evoking some sort of emotion, I, I think too many people just aren't. Um, uh, looking into themselves and, and uh, f having feeling anymore and I think that's what I'd like I, I'm happy when people come by and sit, even when they say this isn't my style I wouldn't necessarily like I don't necessarily like this kind of work but it's made me think and uh, for me that's that's all I, I really care about as long as people are thinking this year's Lake Wales Arts Festival was a great success for more information on events hosted by the Lake Wales Arts Council, visit www.lakewalesartscouncil.org. Well, that's all I have for this month, but there's always plenty going on within the Polk County art scene. Stay tuned for a list of art events in your area. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time for more art out and about.